So that's James's pizza. It's uh, the uh, feta grilled red pepper feta dip uh, with onions. To, um, sorry, spinach, beets, asparagus, and roasted red bell peppers, and some chocolate cake. So this is the dip that I used as a pizza topping or pizza sauce kind of thing and we'll see how this goes James isn't here yet so I'm just gonna go ahead and, and start so um, I'd cook the uh, toppings ahead of time except for the fresh spinach and then uh, I just piled it on and stuck it over so I should say I used up half of a container of this stuff, of this to spread on, on there, and it was really cheap. I, I buy these dips when they're um, put on clearance, so it costs almost nothing really. I, why not? Why not try new things with it? So, I, it's such a beautiful day out that I figured I'd better get outside and enjoy it a little bit. I'd um, notice some things, like I was in the house and I have a mouse, which is not unusual. It is fall. They're looking for places to spend the winter that would be more comfortable than outside. So, um, and plus, I mean, in my house, I set out dishes of food on the floor <laughs> so, for dogs, but um, I'm sure the mice just think that it's like an offering for them or something. I don't know. Anyway, so I figured since I was inside, I hiked yesterday and, and this morning I was feeling kind of under the weather, you know. Um, I'd been sniffling a lot. I got a little too chilled I think while I was hiking yesterday even when we were coming down the mountain the part of the mountain that was in shade uh, going up and coming down it still had frost all over even you know the rest of the so it's interesting when you go for hikes in the mountains this time of year which this is my favorite time you need to hike um, it's a uh, it's interesting because you really have to layer up and uh, one part may be cold and another hot and so you're constantly uh, having to adjust but I mean the good thing is you don't have to uh, really worry about sunblock for the most part well I don't I, but I I have darker skin so that's maybe why um, James he has to put it on all the time so anyway lucky me um, so I wasn't feeling very well and I'd wake up today and then I'd have a little something to eat and then I'd go back to sleep and then I'd wake up and then I'd go back to sleep. And so actually while I was watching these, um, I'd already watched The Crown so I, I didn't miss anything because that, that's definitely worth watching even though I'm not, um, I'm not a, into the royalty or anything like that at all which I mean if you're watching from away then you might think, well, um, Canadian, well, of course they're <laughs> into the crown or whatever. No, a lot of people aren't. Um, even, if, even if they live in places like Canada, we have the queen on our money and whatever. Um, well, I suppose we don't now, do we? I don't know. I haven't even looked. I suppose it would be chuckles. Anyway. Uh, so, I will go over these and I will talk about the crown later on because I'm hoping James will show up and eat some of his food and want to talk about the crown. But yeah, I was just, I brought out this poetry book because I've been meaning to go through it all and um, I thought, well, you know, I'm not feeling that well today but I think I'm feeling well enough to sit in the sun and read some poetry. So see how that goes but I'll talk about uh, these three so love is blind this wasn't that bad 
it's um, kind of an interesting idea and I don't know if it really uh, worked out as well as the people involved had hoped uh, but it has some um, it has some talented actors I, I really like that Chloe Savini or whatever however you say her name um, but James would know <laughs> but anyway the movie it didn't it didn't work pan out as well as I even thought it would um, it the, I'll tell you what was interesting about it um, it's about sight well you can get from the title that was fine but it's really um, it's about seeing is not believing and it is interesting like um, I really don't necessarily trust what I see uh, very much and I try to keep uh, paying attention to other possibilities because um, I know that we don't actually our, our brains um, convince us that we're seeing things that we don't. So I, I know this to be true because I've taken, um, I've read a lot, I've taken a great course that anybody can take for free and video from, you can borrow it from your local public library probably, I did. Um, it was, that one had to be sent in from elsewhere. I can't, I can't remember where that one came from. I went through loads of the great courses well over a hundred so I um, I can't remember where all of them came from but uh, most of them I think ended up coming from Edmonton so uh, thanks Edmonton for having for carrying so many of the great courses so uh, this one was on um, perception and I was talking, it was interesting because that I saw this now because I was just talking to family members uh, recently and I was talking about how, uh, I was talking about this great course and how you see things like click, you turn your head and you think you're seeing continuously, you think you're seeing the whole picture as you turn your head but you're actually not. Um, you're seeing click, 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 click and your brain fills in the gaps for you with whatever your brain thinks should be there. But it may not be the truth at all. You can't really know. Your brain doesn't know. It's filling in gaps. So um, anyway, so a lot of what we see is uh, just constructed by our brains. It's not, it's not reality at all. It's a, an assumption of reality. So, um, Anyway, so I found this interesting that right when I, you know, get back from visiting my family and I talked about this perception thing, um, then here this is for me to watch. And it had been sitting around. I borrowed it before I left to visit my family. and um, But I had no idea what it was about. So anyway, this the main character you don't really know what is reality when you're watching this either because the main character she um, she doesn't see her mother so she doesn't believe that her she thinks that her mother is dead um, and for all you know she may very well be but her father has Parkinson's and her father insists that no, the mother is actually alive and she's right there all the time. But the daughter doesn't see her, so she uh, she believes that she's dead. Anyway, and so anyhow, there's one character in this that he um, He's had some, I guess, suicidal tendencies, but it isn't really that he wants to kill himself, it's that he 
um, doesn't know how to make his reality conform to what he believes. He believes that he should actually be invisible. So, I mean, the two of these people together, um, it, it just uh, makes a lot of sense, right? That they, they kind of, they would assist in making the reality that each one believes possible or something like that right so I can understand how this might be interesting that way and um, a lot of people have felt that I'm sure uh, a little bit of uh, skepticism about what what is real what's I, I know I've um, wondered about that myself I don't know that I mean once you um, accept the possibility that what you're seeing isn't actually real and that leaves a lot of um, a, a lot of possibilities open to uh, exist I guess or not right so um, anyway it just didn't didn't work out as well as I'd hoped it's an interesting idea it just didn't didn't pan out so blue lights now, I don't know why I put this one above this one. They're, these last two are really quite dreadful. So, this show, it's honestly, I think BBC, maybe Britain in general, uh, I think they have a hard time doing uh, police dramas. They're bad. They're not interesting at all. Uh, anyway, it says on the back, one of the best dramas I've seen in a very long time. That's Times Radio, which I don't know who they are, but uh, maybe they haven't seen um, any other television in a long time. So, um, yeah, this was incredibly boring. It's really, I imagine police work really would be a lot of the time, sometimes very much not. Uh, but probably if you're a police officer you'd hope for the boring days. But anyway, there's one character in here that he's quite interesting. And so you're following along and you're like, all right, all right. And then you get to the end and you're like, really? You're going to kill him off out of all these characters? So, I mean, there's I can't imagine that they're going to be able to even do a season two with, um, I, I don't know what they were thinking here. Anyway, so that's that. The Madame Blanc, Blanc Mysteries Series 3. Well, this actress is really not very good. She seems to be in quite a few British things and I, I really don't know why. I mean surely they have um, other people they could hire to do the work but I've reviewed this series in the past. It's not good and yet they keep making it. I, I don't know why. I th I'm assuming it's for overweight women because the women in this are overweight yet they have um, love interests who are not overweight and um, not all the women are overweight one of them is thin but she's not a likable person really so I don't know but honestly I can't relate with any of them maybe the maybe the love interest man a little bit but not even very much so it's really quite dreadful. And um, so I'll get to talking about the crown because this is actually more interesting. So it's uh, when I started watching, I hadn't read that it's the complete final season. And so when I started watching this series, I'm like, well, I can't see how they'd manage to make another season of this after Diana dies because 
mean, that's the interesting stuff, right? But, I mean, they could have done a little bit more with William and Kate. Because that's, there's been some interest there. But, anyhow, so, this is the last season. So I will read some of the notes that I made. Diana and Dodie were in Italy, I think it was. And it's, I mean, when you're watching this, you take it with a grain of salt, and especially if you're uh, somebody of my age or older, you remember this stuff. So you're like, hmm, really? And uh, anyway, so, because this is big news. <laughs> it's just big news. Everybody remembers what was going on with the royal family. So, uh, anyway, so they were eating ice cream, and they presented in this uh, series as though it was his idea to go out for ice cream. She really didn't want to go out for ice cream, but okay, you know, whatever. But because um, she didn't want to be around, you know, getting all getting her picture taken and all this sort of stuff and it's like oh she loved getting her <laughs> pictures taken she was always um, posing for photographers so I, I don't know if I believe that but anyway and then um, so some people recognize them they're just like a few people on the street right and, and so the bodyguard suggests oh let's go into this we can hide in here and it's a jewelry store and it looks pretty posh and they're hiding from the crowd in there and so Dodie asks her well do you want anything from here you know I get you whatever and um, she's like oh I like that and it's you know just casually whatever you know and it's a ring and it's a hideous ring honestly it looks like a Super Bowl ring or something it has so many <laughs> diamonds and stuff on it. whatever it's pretty big so um, and so he phones afterwards, uh, he phones the shop, and it turned out that they didn't have the ring in stock, but they had it in their store in Paris. And so they stopped there on the way back, and he's surprising her, you know, it's just a, she doesn't know why they're stopping there, whatever. And um, he gets the ring, and then he proposes to her, and she's, she says no. And, I mean, they're in private. He's proposing to her in private, and so who could who could know what if she said no or not? It's just them, and how likely is this? They run into a jewelry store. I mean, it makes more sense actually that they went to the jewelry store to pick out a ring, and it wasn't there, and they both agreed to go to the one in Paris to why not go grab the one they want it's in stock right it, that makes more sense that's more believable and uh, and then it makes sense that oh of course she said yes because they'd planned this together all along that makes more sense than this whole story constructed for the series anyway so they both died in the tunnel, which is hidden, right? And uh, so they died in that tunnel car crash before their official announcement of their engagement could be made. Suspicious? Of course, right? Um, Dodie's father bringing up the idea This in this show, they, they suggested little quite a bit of time it passed it looks like before all of a sudden people start talking oh the royal family were involved in uh, killing off Diana and and her the man she was in love with whatever and they're they're suggesting that Dodie's father was the one who brought this up this um, idea that the royal family this the death of these two people but in actuality everybody was talking about it right when it happened everybody it was common gossip so 
Dodie's father bring it up? No. Everybody was talking about it. You know, people were, oh, I don't think they were, oh, well, they might have, because or whatever. Everybody was talking about it. So, um, and then they have Charles crying about Diana and being so sympathetic and whatever and acting like he cared. Really? Uh, that's not believable. And they have uh, him seeing Diana's spirit or whatever, him seeing her there talking to him and she's telling him that he looked so handsome and whatever and uh, no, he never looked handsome. He was always hideous. Absolutely hideous. So she wouldn't have found him handsome. Nobody would have. She would have found um, his title and his wealth uh, attractive, perhaps, but not him. Um, I, I guess he kept himself in shape. Maybe you could look at that, but whatever. Um, and at that time, I mean, she wasn't, she wasn't interested in him anyway. She was obviously, she'd moved on. Obviously. Obviously. So, um, what did I have here? Oh, now I found it interesting when they started bringing Kate into the picture. It looked, Kate is shown as a bit of a, Plotter. I mean, more so her mother, right? To try to get her, uh, try to get William interested in Kate and all this stuff. But um, I don't know. I I don't think so. I mean, the actress who was playing Kate was beautiful, but not as beautiful as Kate. I mean, she was is. I think. I don't know. I haven't looked at the royal <laughs> news about um, Kate or anything. She hasn't been on, on the covers of Inquirer lately or anything like that, so I don't, I honestly have no idea what was going on, what's going on with her now, but I'm sure she's lovely if she's alive. Um, as long as she lives, she will be. Uh, but last I heard, I think she was, I think she was battling cancer or something, which You'd think they'd put that in here, right? Because at the time I was thinking, oh, poor, poor William. I mean, after his mother and now Kate, and, uh, you know, everyone he, all the women he loves the most are, anyway. <sighs> so, uh, but honestly in this, Kate is shown as more of a people's princess than Diana was because uh, she was, her family eats in the kitchen together and the queen was saying like the staff you know she was just put off by it that that they would do such a thing they don't have a dining room why would they do that anyway so that's all I really had written out about the crown um, it's too bad that James didn't show up because I'm sure he would have wanted to talk about the whole politics is um, they didn't really in this which was kind of interesting, uh, because they did show, I mean, a little bit of interaction between the Prime Ministers and, well, oh, Blue Jay right there, I'm going to show you. I'm trying to sneak over before he flies away. Oh, yeah. There he is. Do you see him? Hey, Blue Jay. Where are you, honey? He's in the shrub way over there. Behind my banana peels that have stayed in the tree. You see him bouncing around over there? There he is, now the, down near the ground, sort of. Did you want some snacks, Blue Jay?